It is a windy day out on the driving range, and today Thomas is going to show us how to hit those tricky approach shots into the wind to help you get the ball close to the hole and shoot better scores. Hey golfers, Thomas and Drew out on the driving range today at Les Bolstead Golf Course on a very windy day. And golfers in the Midwest, I know that's a lot of kind of the viewers and uh, customers that we have for Second Swing are in the Midwest, but playing in the wind is a common thing. And so dealing with approach shots and iron shots into the wind is kind of a problem and a, and a common one. So, so Thomas, from a, you know, a broad perspective, just kind of what do you think about when you're hitting an iron shot into the wind, a stiff one like this? Well, first thing I'm thinking about is spin. What is going to influence the spin on the golf ball? Spin is your worst enemy when you got wind into you. Mm -hmm. The ball is not going to spin more when you're hitting into the wind, but if you are a high spin golfer, generally speaking, the ball is gonna go quite a bit shorter and be hard to control. So I'm gonna try and find a way to reduce spin. So I usually I'm trying to hit more of a knockdown shot rather than a full swing straight up into the air. Well, we've got Trappin with us today, and we've got Thomas here with us today to hit some shots. We'll look at what the data says with a normalization button on and off, and uh, we'll see exactly how much of this effect of the wind has and how Thomas can help you reduce it. About 150. 147 total. 146.4 carry. Pretty good. I lost that completely. Same spot, just up in the air. Yep, that was a little shorter. All right, so Thomas, you hit two iron shots there, seven iron, and I know what your numbers typically are. When you're inside, you're carrying the ball. I know you like to say 178-ish to going a little over 180 maybe, right? Um, that is not the case with those two shots. Um, you hit, you know, you carried on average 141, <laughs> and your total was average of 140.8, so you're actually bringing the ball back a little <laughs> bit. Uh, it's funny though, because the, the spin was a little bit different. So 72 on one shot and 79 on another. And with, because of that, the, the discrepancy in the distance was a little bit big. You had a carry of 146 and a carry of 135. Okay. Um, but I think that's, a lot of that is due to the wind. I mean, you get a little bit of a difference in spin, as we mentioned, that's gonna you know increase or decrease how much it's affected by the wind. So I right. um, also wanted to throw on the normalization button and show what the numbers are you know, you're hitting about 171 yards both times. So uh, now we kind of have the next step here, which would be, you know, you, you know, let's say you have this type of condition, th these winds, and you're probably not going to hit that full seven because you see the difference there in, in distance was about 30 plus yards. Right. So how do you, you know, set up and, and what's going through your head when you have a shot like this with this wind? Well, first thing I was hitting seven iron before, no longer hitting seven iron. Okay. So I would actually take one or two clubs less okay. and then choke down on the club a little bit. Okay. So I would actually try and feel like I'm hitting more like a 1030 swing, like I'm okay. normally hitting a 1030 wedge shot that's gonna bring the flight down a little bit. I like to choke down on it, as I mentioned. I also like to stand a little bit closer to the ball. A little bit closer, it allows me to swing a little bit more vertical, which causes that ball to fly quite a bit lower. Okay. Are you and, doing anything with ball position or is that staying the same? Ball position, it might be just slightly back of where I'm at, but for the most part, with a seven iron, I'm pretty close to the middle of my stance anyway. Yeah. Um, and I do a little bit of an abbreviated finish at the end too. Okay. So I don't finish you know, way, way up here. Yeah. I might kind of just kind of abbreviate finish and finish here. Sure, sure, okay. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's see how this then, so this is kind of your knockdown, so to speak, iron shot. You can see the gust coming up right here. Uh, so you got a knockdown shot compared to those first two seven irons that you hit. Sounds good. It was definitely a lot lower ball flight. Oh yeah, a lot lower ball flight. See, that's, and that's a, it's also the straightest of the shots so far. It's right next to the center line. It carried at 146, going 153, and your spin was reduced by almost 2,000 RPM. So, like you said, that effect that the wind has is drastically reduced there. Right, you've got to accept that the ball is just gonna go shorter into the wind, it just naturally is. I like to use a formula that every mile an hour of wind is about one yard. Mm -hmm. So if you have, say, a 100 yard shot and you're playing into a 10 mile an hour wind, it's probably gonna play 110 versus 100 yards. So right. you take one extra club there. Sure, sure, yeah. I mean, that's a, it's a pretty basic formula and it's probably not exact, but it's something that you can go off of as a guide because then you can see, you know, let's say you have, you know, an even longer shot than this, you might be clubbing down twice 
to hit that shot because it'll be, you know, maybe from a four iron to a six iron then, right? Something like, or excuse me, six iron to a four iron. Yep. Um, where you're clubbing down, I guess, clubbing up in a way uh, to make sure you get enough distance on it. All right, so tell me a little more about those numbers on that shot. Mm -hmm. So we look at those numbers and so, uh, your club speed was actually a slower by about five miles an hour. And okay. I think that's probably part of hey, standing closer to the ball, choking down on it, yep. swinging kind of vertical. Uh, like I mentioned, that probably helped that spin go down by about 2000 RPM. Your launch angle was 10 degrees, which is <laughs> 8.6 lower than yep. your other seven irons. Funny thing is your smash was higher. So you hit the ball a little bit more efficiently with this knockdown swing. Got a little less loft on the golf club. Right. Yep. Uh, so it's, it is funny that, so one of the shots you had with your seven iron, uh, the full swing carried 146.4, this carried 146.6, but that seven iron totaled 147, this totaled 153. So you're kind of getting that rollout effect too, where, um, you know, if you're trying to hit to a back pin, perhaps that's going to be a lot better for you as yeah. well. Uh, landing angle is another big, uh, big piece to discuss here. Cause the landing angle for the seven iron was 64.4. <laughs> uh, and this one was 49.8. Yeah. Six, so. yeah, that's that's a lot. I don't think I've ever seen a landing angle that's in the 60s pretty steep. before. Yeah. yeah, I mean, one of the shots is yeah. 67.8, so yeah. <laughs> that's coming down pretty steep. Right, You want it, that's the way it comes, comes down and wanting to control the ball flight. Yeah. Yep. yeah, and then speaking of the ball flight, the last piece I think we should really touch on is height. Um, your seven iron shots were respectively 128 and 129 feet in the air. This one was 72. So, I mean, obviously the loft is, is a little bit of a part of it, but I think it's just the, the type of swing you made, a lot shorter, a lot more vertical in terms of uh, coming down a little bit steeper maybe. Yep. Uh, and then swinging a little bit slower. I uh, was able to keep that flight down, control a little bit more. And the result, I mean, distance wise, nothing was lost. In fact, you actually gained total distance. Um, and it was the straightest shot of the day as you can see on the map here, so. Yeah, end of the day, it's about managing yourself around the golf course, hitting it straight, not trying to overpower the wind. Sure, well, let's go, let's go over those, those steps one more time to recap the video here, uh, the steps that you take when you're addressing that shot, you talked about your grip, you talked about your setup, maybe closer to the ball, and then your finish. So talk, just review those things one more time. Yeah, so in, in a normal swing, I'd grip the club fairly high up the, the grip. I actually would grip it down closer, almost not quite to the steel, but quite close down yeah. there on the bottom of the grip. Stand a little bit closer to the ball. Well, that allows me to then get a little bit more vertical on the way back, Yep. and then a little bit of an abbreviated finish as opposed to finishing way, way up here and allowing that ball to kind of get up there. Sure. Well, those are the simple, quick tips. And as you can see on the demonstration with TrackMan today, the ball is also going to go a lot straighter and you're going to have a lot more control of your ball flight on these tricky shots into the wind. So Thomas, thanks for showing us today how it's done. Hopefully golfers will take this to the course and they'll shoot some lower scores. Sounds good.